Well, we're back together again, looking at a series that prepares us for Easter. My premise is that the better we know Christ, the more profound the death and resurrection become to us. We've been looking at a gospel that was specifically written as an apologetic to the character or the nature of Christ. When there were questions about who was Jesus, John was asked to write a gospel. His memory, his recalling of who Jesus was, both fully God and fully man. In the course of of John's Gospels, he wrote these statements that, that, that we're looking at, these statements that begin to declare the nature of Christ, the I am statements of Christ. We look at when Jesus cried out, I am. When soldiers fell back, when Pharisees heard and knew and became so angry, he was making a declaration that he was divine. Last week, we looked at, in the context of John chapter 6, the bread of life. Jesus says, I'm the bread of life. Not that manna that was, but bread that is eternal, that will sustain you forever. Today, I want to continue looking at these statements. The statement I want to read is in John chapter 8. But before we get there, we got to know what's going on in John chapter 7 because they're kind of connected events. Jesus is coming to celebrate the Feast of Tabernacles. It was a Jewish celebration that was a reminder of their time in the wilderness. They would set up tents or booths and and spend seven days in those tents celebrating the God who protects and provides. In the course of that, while Jesus is at the the tabernacle, while he's at the temple, uh, he has some disagreements, which is what usually happens with Jesus and the Pharisees. They, they, They have trouble. They're questioning who he says he is, his teaching, and all these things. And and so John chapter 8 kind of picks up a day after. At dawn, he appeared again in the temple courts where all the people gathered around him, and he sat down to teach them. The teachers of the law and Pharisees brought in a woman caught in adultery. They made her stand before the group and said to Jesus, Teacher, this woman was caught in the act of adultery. In the law, Moses commanded us to stone such a woman. Now, what do you say? They were using this question as a trap in order to have a basis for accusing him. But Jesus bent down and started to write on the ground with his finger. When they kept on questioning him, he straightened up and said to them, let any one of you who is without sin be the first to throw a stone at her. And again, he stooped down and he wrote on the ground. At this, those who heard began to go away one at a time, the older ones first, until the only Jesus was left with the woman standing there. Jesus straightened up and asked her, woman, where are they? Has no one condemned you? No one, sir, she said. Then neither do I condemn you, Jesus declared. Now go and leave your life of sin. The Pharisees, they had all night to stew over their confrontation with Jesus. And they decided a plan. They devised a plan that would position Jesus against the law of Moses. The interesting thing about the end of the Feast of Tabernacles is it's a time where they celebrate the fulfillment of God's provision and protection through the Torah. The word of God, the law of Moses that was given to his people. And, and, and the, the Pharisees are trying to use the very thing they're celebrating against Jesus to catch him, to trap him. They all left. John eight twelve continues. When Jesus spoke again to the people, he said, I'm the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. Jesus declared, I am the light of the world. You know, that light is a a word or a phrase that John uses time and time again. We see it in the gospel of John. We see it in his letters, in his epistles. We see it in the book of Revelation. The, 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 The parallel, the comparison of light and Christ. Jesus Christ saying, I'm the light of the world. A few weeks ago, uh, Pastor Tara here, our kids pastor, youth pastor, associate pastor, um, she was preparing for after school program and, and, and she came to me and she said, I'm teaching on creation. And, you know, on Genesis, on day one, God says, let there be light, but he doesn't create the sun until day four. What do you think he created? And what a profound question to pause and reflect on as we think about Jesus's declaration I'm the light of the world. 
I read a study online that said light in the Jewish Bible is not emitted by any earthly or heavenly source. Rather, it's the product of divinity or of the divine spark attributed to those who are sanctified. Light is thus used to symbolize wisdom and righteousness and the favor of God. Light means something more than what you see around you. Jesus looked at this woman who was being condemned to die, embarrassed by the Pharisees, brought before the crowd that Jesus was teaching in her adultery, in her sin, fully exposed. The the, the darkness that was around her was the law that said she would be stoned for her sin. And what Jesus did was he said that I'm going to bring light in this broken situation. I'm going to take what is darkness and bring it to light. There was freedom from the condemnation of men and sin. There was eternal life that was this woman's through Jesus Christ. John chapter 1 verse 3 says, Through him all things were made, without him nothing was made that has been made in him was life and that life was the light of all mankind the light that shines in the darkness and the darkness has not overcome it in john chapter 1 we see the reality that jesus christ is the light of the world that light is eternal life he brought that light in that moment as he came to this earth he's revealing his eternal nature to all who will listen to all who will obey and he says i'm bringing eternal life where there once was condemnation that is the light of the world john chapter 9 as he went along he saw a blind man from birth his disciples asked him rabbi who sinned this man or his parents that he was born blind Neither this man nor his parents sinned, said Jesus, but this happened so that the work of God might be displayed in his life. As long as it is his day, we must do the work of him who sent me. Night is coming when no one can work. While I'm in the world, I am the light of the world. Having said this, he spit on the ground and he made some mud with saliva and put it in the man's eyes. Go, he told him, wash in the pool of psyllium, which the word means sent. So the man went and washed and came home seeing. This man was being judged unfairly, unjustly by the disciples. He was considered, it was his fault or the fault of his family that he was blind. There was a condemnation that came from man. I tell you, we've got a condemnation in our lives that comes from sin. And we've got a condemnation that comes in our life that's from men. That's from the thoughts of men, the words of men, the judgments of men. Jesus said, I'm coming to lift that darkness. No longer can sickness, no longer can men condemn you. I am the light of the world. John chapter 12. The crowd spoke up. We've heard from the law of that the Christ will remain forever. So how can you say the son of man must be lifted up? Who is this son of man? Then Jesus told him, you're going to have the light for just a little while longer. Walk while you have the light. Before darkness overtakes you, the man who walks in the dark does not know where he's going. So put your trust in the light so that you have it, so that you may become sons of the light. When he had finished speaking, Jesus left him and hid himself from them. Even after Jesus had performed so many signs in their presence, they still would not believe him. I've come to the world as a light so that no one who believes in me should stay in darkness. Jesus has said, I am light in the condemnation of sin and the condemnation of this world. In this world, there is darkness. But what he's telling me in John chapter 12 is that we do not have to stay in that darkness unless we choose to stay in that darkness. 2 Corinthians chapter 4 says, For God, who said, Let light shine out of darkness, made his light shine in our hearts to give us the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Christ. 1 John chapter 5 says, This is the message we've heard from him and declared to you. God is light. In him there is no darkness at all. We do not have to remain in the darkness. 
We don't have to remain in the darkness that comes from sin, in the darkness that comes from evil, in the darkness that comes from the brokenness of this world because there is light. It's a light that is great. It's a light that is eternal. It's a light that is forever. It's a light that is everywhere should we choose to be in it. I like to sleep in the dark. We've got curtains and we close the curtains and we cover them up so that no light comes in. But it's really hard to keep the light out once the sun comes up. You know, it takes intentional effort at times to keep the light of God from coming into your life. Sometimes it's our choice. It's what we say. It's how we cover our eyes. Yes, I understand the God of this age has blinded eyes so they cannot see. But many men and women walk in the knowledge of darkness, willfully, willingly, wanting to stay in darkness. We don't have to stay in the darkness Because Jesus Christ is a light that shows the way. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my my path. Ephesians chapter 5, for you were once in darkness, but now you are in the light in the Lord. Live as children of the light. For the fruit of the light consists in all goodness, righteousness, and truth. And find out what pleases the Lord. Whether it's direction, revelation, illumination, the light results in transformation. That's what happens when we're in the light. When we're in the light, we no longer deflect the light, but we reflect the light to the world around us. He calls us the light of the world as well. His children, what does that mean? That we can show others there is a way, that we can illuminate a path to the one, that is Jesus Christ, that we can show what he's done in us and reflect it to others so that no one needs to be in darkness. The Lord bless you and keep you. May he make his face shine upon you, be gracious to you, may he turn his face toward you and grant you his peace. And may you see Jesus Christ, who said, I am the light of the world. Be blessed.